Oké, okay, hier we're at the European Banking Association Day in de Rij in Amsterdam. En ik praat hier met Mark Harley. En Mark wrote this report, together with Connie, about PSD2. Now, PSD1 is that horrible standard in Europe, which basically gave me that stupid IBAN number, so I cannot change banks anymore. I hate you, European community, for that. But I might like PSD2. Why would I like PSD2, Mark? Because what it means for you is you don't have to go through a bank to access your account information services or make your payments. You can now go through a, a regulated organization that is not a bank that can access your information that's held at a bank and make payments on your behalf from that bank. But that just means you're going to see a whole new type of bank come out of this regulation. So wait, I, I, I can basically have one user interface for all my different banks One way to one calculator or one way to be to to authorize my to authorize the payment and all the banks will accept those payments. They have to because it's a regulation and you're absolutely right. So the nirvana of an aggregated scenario for you is about to become a reality because of this regulation. Okay, because I always used to be tied in because of the bank number, but now I'm basically tied in because of the internet banking system and all my different accounts. But now I have one user interface which can be do, do all my bank accounts now. This will take 10 years to implement? Well, the legislation is supposed to come in in September and then the banks have two years after that to implement the service. So within three years, you're going to have the option that you've just talked about. Okay. But two years in the banking world, I mean, they cannot even, they cannot even go to the toilet. Well, indeed, they've got some challenges with their infrastructure, but nevertheless, the regulator is going to force the agenda and make them implement it in the same way that they did with PSD1. Okay, but listen, some kind of a startup will have an interface like Twitter now, you know, I Twitter and Facebook, yep. and I can basically do all my payments. How do they know that that user interface, that fintech, that fintech yep. uh, can be trusted? Because the fintech provider has to be regulated with what's called a payments institution license, which is like a banking license light. It means they don't have any credit risk, but they can make payments on your behalf. So you're not going to get some garage shops that can just do this for you they have to be regulated and they have to be on some form of directory so that you know that they are a regulated entity okay and it's completely clear who's who what the conditions are for those kinds of uh, payment uh, yeah. Yeah. those horrible documents that i'm sure you don't want to read has all the liabilities and how money gets followed if it goes missing etc etc so it will be fine don't worry oh No, I don't worry. But if there's anything about me as a consumer, I'm really afraid that my, my money is going away like this. You know, I, I, I'm not afraid of hackers, but my banking, uh, if they hack my bank, I'm really worried. Well, one of the nice things that you've got, of course, is the ability now for that portal provider to move money around. So I'm sure you've got a lot of money. Let's say you've got a million euros. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Let's say you've got a million euros. You're only protected by deposit insurance for, it, for up to 100,000 euros. What this allows you to do, have is some regulated entity to move your money around without you actually even having to give them the authority more than once so they, they get you the best interest rate on your money and you get them the ability to make sure that you haven't got all that money in one place so that if something does go wrong, you're not at risk. Okay. So this can happen in two years. Let's see in the survey... He basically, he's done a survey, uh, mostly Western banks, uh, because this is of course for Western banks most importantly, and of course banks in North America. Are they aware? Do they think this is going to implement their business, their awareness? Well, most of them, 80%, 80% thinks yes. They're definitely aware of this. Do you see that also, Mark, that they are aware of this and that they're building teams now to make this work? They are, some of them are aware of it, some more so than others. Uh, there are some teams that are an extension of the, their PSD1 teams, but some of the more forward-thinking banks are actually looking at having a strategic team looking at this as a particular opportunity. Okay. Is it an opportunity or do they have to fight it off? Well, most of them think um, the main competition will come from non-banks. So they basically are uh, thinking that all kinds of other players will come into the market. Well. They're thinking that they're, the threats will come from the new entrants, yeah, the apples the, and, and so forth. But what's quite disconcerting about this uh, research is that most of them only think it affects their younger generation clients. They don't think it affects people like you and me. They don't think we will change bank and move to a... because they're trusted. I personally think that's very short if I can, If I can change bank, I mean, at the moment you change partners easier than banks. 
because you're in this web you're in this web of internet banking mobile banking all kinds of stuff uh, old numbers you've used but if if i can go away from you banks and have better service i will go in a heartbeat you need to move to the uk where uh, the government has just launched a site yeah. a banking site well it's a it's a site where i can go and get my 12 month transaction history from my current account put it into a comparison website it will then spit out the best account for me based on my spending habit i can then open that account in seven days move everything my direct debits everything across so there are things that are in other jurisdictions now seven days i think you and i would agree is far too long but at least it at least it's better than in my, my same days. bank for 25 years or so, uh, seven, seven days, days more you can wait right okay. did you change banks yes did you go to I'm not telling you okay, good then what about in general what came out of your survey how open are all these banks on the API economy the the, 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 the app stores etc well they all talk about it I, I said to a few people here today if I could count the number of times I've heard the expression customer centric if I could count the number of times I've heard collaboration if I could count the number of times I've heard innovation they're all paying lip service to it they're not really looking at this as a business strategy to radically change the way they work. I believe customer centricity is a philosophy, it's not a technology. They need to change their approach. It will be a little bit of fr friction before they have that done. Uh, okay. Now one question, you've made this research here, clear to pay what does clear to pay do? We provide payment services to financial institutions and that will be a broader term as in financial institutions because this regulation now opens up the market for competition which is so for you this is also a great chance you you basically say you will provide those services those integrating integration services yeah, absolutely that's what we do so a great chance so the report is on PSD2 and XS2A access to account that's actually the same thing regulation or uh, opportunity where's the website where we can find this report uh, it's on the Finextra website, finextra.com, and it's free to download. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it.